In this video, we use existing Azure resources as part of a Terraform deployment. If you use Terraform for long enough, you'll run into an instance where you need to use an existing resource that's not managed by Terraform as part of the Terraform deployment. A common example is using an uh, existing virtual network when deploying a network-enabled resource, a virtual machine, for example. This video is going to demonstrate how to use existing resources with Terraform. Before that, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Get early access to videos with a membership option, and check out my courses on hybrid identity and Azure Virtual Desktop at udemy.com. The link is below. There are two options for using resources created by some means other than Terraform, import and data source. Import, as the name implies, imports infrastructure into Terraform management. Import adds resources to the deployment state with the expectation that it'll be managed by Terraform going forward. Data source, or just data, allows Terraform to define and use infrastructure created outside of the current deployment. It could have been deployed as part of another Terraform deployment or using some other process like uh, the portal or ARM templates. The key difference is that with data, the source does not become managed by Terraform or part of any Terraform state. The data block simply points to existing infrastructure so we can reference the resource in the deployment. The rest of this video will focus on data source. The data block is used to read data from an existing source. This is a read-only action. We're not modifying the data at all. Also, the data resource is refreshed every time Terraform plan is ran. We're going to create a data resource in the demo coming up. The goal of the demo is to create a VM that will attach to an existing subnet. We'll also use the feature block to define the behavior of the VM implementation. Use a sensitive argument to hide passwords and review a TFVARS file. The code used in this demo is available on GitHub. The link is below. Let's get started in VS Code. Here we are in VS Code. If you're just getting started with Terraform and Azure, check out the playlist and the prior videos on Terraform. The link is on your screen. I already have a module defined that creates a VM. It's a pretty simple example. The module name is WinServer. The main.tf file starts by creating a network interface or NIC. The VM name is used with hyphen NIC appended to the end for the name of the network interface card. Notice var.subnetid. We have to have a subnet to attach the NIC to. We'll come back to that shortly. Next, we have a series of settings for the VM. Resource group, location, size, and admin username and password. The rest is hard-coded, but it could be changed to a variable if needed. Let's look at the variables for this module. I'm not going through each one, but if we go down to admin password, Notice it has the sensitive argument, and that's set to true. Sensitive set to true prevents the password from displaying on the screen during deployment. Kind of a security by obscurity setting. Not only will it prevent it from displaying on the screen, if you're using Terraform with automation, it could prevent passwords from getting written to log files in plain text. Let's take a look at the outputs. We'll output the VM ID and the VM IP address when deployed. Let's close all the module files and go to the root directory. Here we have the inputs.tf, outputs.tf, main.tf, and a terraform.tfvars file. Let's start with the main.tf file. We have the terraform block just like all the other videos, as well as the provider block. The provider block though is different. It has a virtual machine feature set. These features tell Terraform to delete the OS disk when we run the destroy command. We could set this to false so the virtual disk is preserved. There's also a setting that will not require a shutdown to delete a VM. This way the VM is deleted no matter what the power state. The available features for the provider block can be found in the Terraform documentation. From Azure RM, we'll go into documentation. We can go to argument reference features. Here are all the feature blocks available with the Azure RM resource provider. If we go to virtual machines, here we can find details for each of the settings. For the example, we're using delete OS disk on deletion. 
and skip, shut down, and force delete. Let's go back to VS Code. Next, we have the resource group. The name and location is hard coded. That could be set as a variable if needed. After that, we have the data block. Let's go back to the documentation and take a look at how to configure data blocks. Here we are back in the Azure RM provider. And if we type subnet, we have the resources up top. That's what we'd use to create a new subnet. At the bottom, we have data sources and Azure subnet under that. This is where we find the settings required to read data from existing infrastructure. It also shows an example of how we can output that data. Let's go back to VS Code. Here we have the data source for an Azure subnet that has the local name VM subnet. We pass in the existing subnet name. That's the Azure name of the subnet we'll attach the NIC to. It also needs the virtual network name, the virtual network that the subnet belongs to, and the resource group name for that virtual network. Now, if we look at the VM module that we're going to call, we can see the last line references the subnet ID of the subnet data source. That will pass in the subnet ID of the existing subnet the virtual machine network card will attach to. We do have a few variables in this root module. Let's take a look at that. We have the subnet information as well as the admin password. That password variable is also set to sensitive. The password is passed into the VM module when it's called. One item that's different from the other videos is there's no default value for these variables. Instead of default values, I created a terraform.tfvars file. This is a file that supplies values to all those variables. So why not just use default values in the input file? Generally, you don't want to supply default values for variables in a module. That makes the variables optional. For this example, we wouldn't want to use a default for the subnet settings because that would likely be wrong if used in a different environment. Also, if you're using git for source code control, we can prevent the tfvars file from getting pushed into source control with a git ignore file. So why would that be important? Notice I supplied a password in the tfvars file. It's bad practice to keep passwords in plain text in source control, especially if it's a public repo. The tfvars file, along with git ignore, is a strategy for protection against password leaks. One last item, we pass the VM ID and IP address back to the root module with an outputs.tf file. We also created an output file in the root module to pass those values to the terminal. Okay, let's open up the terminal and run Terraform init and Terraform plan. There's the output from Terraform plan. Notice the value for the VM ID and the VM IP will show after Terraform apply. Let's also look at the password. Here it shows the admin password as a sensitive value. So it's not displaying the actual password we passed in. That all looks good. Let's run Terraform apply. And this will take a few minutes to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. There it is, we have the VM ID as well as the IP address. That IP address is from the existing subnet we attached the network card to. We now have a VM deployed with Terraform connecting to an existing VNet that's outside of the Terraform state. I hope this helps you better understand the data source in Terraform with Azure. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.